Okay, welcome back everyone. Live coverage here at theCUBE, Boston, Massachusetts for AWS Reinforce 22 Security Conference for Amazon Web Services. Obviously reInvent the end of the year. It's the big celebration. ReMars is the new show that we've covered as well. The Rees are here with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. We've got a great guest, Amish Divatia, co-founder and CEO of a company called Baffle. Amish, thanks for joining us on theCUBE today. Congratulations. Thank you. It's great to be here. And we got the custom encrypted socks. Okay, yep. Limited 64 edition. bitter, 128. Six, base 64 in code, okay. secret yeah. message in there. Okay, secret message in there. <laughs> we'll have to put a little, little meme on the internet, figure it out. Well, thanks for coming on. You guys are hot right now. Um, you guys are a hot startup, but you're in an area that's going to explode, we believe. Yeah. Um, the super cloud is here, we've been covering that on the, on the Cube, that people are building on top of the Amazon hyperscalers, and, and without the CapEx, they're building platforms. The application tsunami has come and still coming. It's not stopping. Modern applications are faster, they're better, and they're driving a lot of change under the covers. Absolutely, yeah. And you're seeing structural change happening in real time in, in ops, the network. You guys got something going on in the encryption area, yes. data. Talk about what you guys do. Yeah, so uh, we believe very strongly that uh, the next frontier in security is data. We've had multiple waves in security. The next one is data because data is really where the threats will, will persist. If the data shows up in, a, in the wrong place, you get into a lot of trouble with compliance. So we believe in protecting the data all the way down at the field or record level. That's what we do. And you guys doing like all kinds of encryption or other things? Yes, so we do data transformation, which encompasses three different things. Um, it can be tokenization, which is format preserving. We do real encryption with counter mode, or we can do masked views. So tokenization, encryption, and masking all with the same platform. So pretty wide ranging capabilities with respect to having that kind of safety. Yes, because it all depends on how the data is used down the road. Um, data is created all the time. Uh, data flows through pipelines all the time. You want to make sure that you protect the data but don't lose the utility of the data. That's why we provide all that flexibility. So Kurt was on stage today on one of the keynotes. He's the VP of the platform at AWS. Yes. Uh, he's talking about encrypts everything. He did, he said it needs to re, be, re we need to rethink it, encryption. Okay, like, okay, good job, we like that. But then he said, we have encryption at rest. Yes. That's kind of been there, done that. Yes. Uh, and in flight. Yeah. That's but been there. what about in use? So that's exactly what we plug. What happens right now is that data at rest is protected because of disks that are already self-encrypting or you have transparent data encryption that comes native with the database. You have data in flight that is protected because of SSL, but when the data is actually being processed, it's in the memory of the database or data store, it is exposed. So the threat is if the credentials of the database are compromised as happened back then with Starwood, or if the cloud infrastructure is compromised with some sort of an insider threat like a Capital One, mm -hmm. that data is exposed. That's precisely what we solve by making sure that the data is protected as soon as it's created. We use standard encryption algorithms, AES, and we either do format preserving or true encryption with counter mode, and that data, it doesn't really matter where it ends up yeah. because it's always protected. Well, that's awesome, and I think this is, brings up the point that we want to be covering on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE, is that there's been structural change that's happened yes. called cloud computing, yes. and then hybrid. Okay, scale, role of data, higher level abstraction of services, developers are in charge, value creation, startups and big companies. That success is causing now a new structural change happening now. Yes. This is one of them. What areas do you see that are happening right now that are structurally changing? That's right in front of us. One is more cloud native, so the success has become now the problem to yes. solve, to get to the next level. Yeah, what so are those, what, some of what those? we see is that instead of security being an afterthought, something that you use as a watchdog, you create ways of monitoring where data is being exposed or data is being exfiltrated, you want to build security into the data pipeline itself. As soon as data is created, you identify what is sensitive data and you encrypt it or tokenize it as it flows into the pipeline using things like Kafka plugins or what we are very clearly differentiating ourselves with is proxy architectures so that it's completely transparent. You think you're writing to the data store but you're actually writing to the proxy which in turn 
encrypts the data before it's stored. Do you think that's an efficient way to do it or is it the only way to do it? It is a much more efficient way of doing it because of the fact that you don't need any app dev resources. There are many other ways of doing it. In fact, the cloud vendors provide development kits where you can just go do it yourself. Um, so that is actually something that we completely avoid. And what makes it really, really interesting is that once the data is encrypted in the data store or database, we can do what is known as privacy enhanced computation. Mm -hmm. So we can actually process that data without decrypting it. Yeah. And so proxies then with cloud computing can be very fast, not a bottleneck. They in could be. In fact, the cloud makes it so. It's very hard to you do believe these that. things in, in static infrastructure. In the cloud, there's infinite amount of processing available yeah. and there's containerization. And you have good network. You have, you have very good network, you have load balancers, yeah. you have ways of creating redundancy. Mm -hmm. So the cloud is actually enabling solutions mm -hmm. like this. In the old way, proxies were seen as an architectural fail in, in the old antiquated static web. And, and this is where startups don't have the baggage, right? We didn't have that baggage. <laughs> we looked at the problem and said, of course we're going to use a proxy because this is the best way to do this in an efficient way. Well, you bring up something that's happening right now that I hear a lot of CISOs and CIOs and executives say, CXOs say all the time, our, our I won't say the word, our stuff has gotten complicated. Yes. So now I have tool sprawl, I have yep. skill gaps, and on the rise, all these new managed services coming at me from the vendors who have never experienced my problem. And their, their reaction is, they don't get my problem and they don't have the right solutions. It's more, it's more complexity. They solve the complexity by adding more complexity. Yes. I think we, again, the proxy approach is that, very you're simple. You're solving that with that Exactly, it's approach. very simple. Um, and again, we don't get in the way. That's really the, the biggest differentiator the forcing function really here is compliance, right? Because compliance is forcing the CISOs to yeah. actually adopt these solutions. All right, so I love the compliance angle, love the proxy as an ease of use, take the heavy lifting away, no operational mm -hmm. problems and, and deviations. Now let's talk about workloads. Yeah. Because this is where the, in the use is. So you got w workloads being run, large scale, a lot of data moving around, compute as well. What's the challenge there? I think it's the volume of the data. Um, traditional solutions that were relying on legacy tokenizations uh, you know, would, would replicate the entire storage because it would create a token vault, for example. You cannot do that at this scale. You have to do something that's a lot more efficient, which is where you have to do it with a cryptography approach. So the workloads are diverse. Lots of large files in the workloads as well as you know, structured workloads. What we have is a solution that actually goes across the board. We can do unstructured data with HTTP proxies, we can do structured data with SQL proxies, and that's how we are able to provide a complete solution for the pipeline. So, I mean, talk about the on-premise versus the cloud workload dynamic right now. Hybrid is a steady state right now. Yeah. Multi-cloud is, is a consequence of having multiple vendors. Not true multi-cloud, but like, okay, they have Azure there, AdminDev is here, I get that. But hybrid really is the steady state. Yes. Cloud operations. How are the workloads and the analytics, the data being managed on-prem and in the cloud? What's the relationship? What's the trend? What are you seeing happening there? I think the biggest trend we see is pipelining, right? It, the new ETL is streaming. You have these Kafka and Kinesis uh, capabilities that are coming into the picture where data is being ingested all the time. It is not a one-time migration, it's a stream. Okay. So plugging into that stream is very important from an ingestion perspective. <laughs> so it's not just a watchdog. No, it's, the it's pipelining. built in. It's built in, it's real time, that's where the streaming data, it's another diverse access to data. Exactly. Data lakes, you got data lakes, you have pipeline, you got streaming, you mentioned that. So talk about the old school OLTP, you know, the old BI world. I think Power BI is like a $30 billion product. Yeah. And you got Tableau built on OLTP, building cubes. Aren't we just building cubes in a new way? or well, is there any relevance to the old school? I think there, there is some relevance, and in fact, that's again another place where the proxy architecture really helps, because it doesn't matter when your application was built. You can use Tableau, which nobody has any control over, and still process encrypted data. And so can you with Power BI. Any SQL application can be used, and that's actually exactly what, 
we like to. So we were, I was talking to your team, I knew you were coming on, and they gave me a sound bite that I'm going to read to the audience, and I want to get your reaction to. Sure. Because I love this, I fell out of my chair when I first read this. Data is the new oil in 2010 that was mentioned here on theCUBE, of course. Data is, is the new oil, but we have to ensure that it does not become the next asbestos. Okay, that is really clever. So, we all know about asbestos. I had to the Dave Vellante, lead paint too, remember lead paint? <laughs> you got to scrape it out and repaint the house. Asbestos obviously causes a lot of cancer. You know, joking aside, the point is, it's problematic. It's the assets Explain and, why that sentence is relevant. Sure, it's, it's the assets and liabilities argument. Right, you have an asset, which is data, but thanks to compliance regulations, and Gartner says 75% of the world will be subject to privacy regulations by 2023, it's a liability. So if you don't store your data well, if you don't process your data responsibly, you are going to be liable. So while it might be the oil and you're going to get lots of value out of it, be careful about the, the flip side. And the point is, there could be the grim reaper waiting for you. If you don't do it right, the consequences that are quantified would be being out of business. Yes, but here's something that we just discovered actually from a survey that we did. While 93% of respondents said that they have had lots of compliance related effects on their budgets, 75% actually thought that it makes them better. They can use the security postures as a competitive differentiator. That's very heartening to, to us. We don't like to sell the fear aspect of yeah. this. We like to sell the fact that you look better compared to your neighbor if you have better data hygiene. Back well, to there's, the, there's the fear of missing out, or as they say, keeping up with the Joneses, you know, making sure that your yard looks better than the next one. I get the vanity of that, but you're solving real problems. And this is interesting, and I, and I want to get your thoughts on this. I, I, found, I read that you guys protect more than 100 billion records across highly re regulated industries, financial services, healthcare, IO, industrial IOT, retail and government. Is that true? Absolutely, because what we are doing is enabling SaaS vendors to actually allow their customers to control their data. So we've had the SaaS vendor who has been working with us for over three years now. They store confidential data from 30 different banks in the country. That's a and lot that's of records. Where, that's where the record and How many customers do you have? Well, well I think next round of funding is probably, <laughs> they're lining up to put money into you guys. Well, again, you know? this is a very important problem and there are, people's businesses are dependent on this. We're just happy to provide the best tool out okay, there so that can do this. Okay, so what's your business model behind it? I love the success, by the way. I wanted to quote that set, the one verify it. What's the business model? Service, um, software? The business model is software. We don't want anybody to, to send us their confidential data. We embed our software into our customers' environments. In case of SaaS, we are not even visible. We are completely embedded. Uh, We're doing other relationships like that right now. And they now. pay you how? They pay us based on the volume of the data that they're protecting. Got it. Um, that in that case, which is a large customers, large enterprise so customers. pay as you go. It is pay as you go. Everything is, is annual licenses, although multi-year licenses are very common because once you adopt the solution, uh, it, it is very sticky. And then for smaller customers, we do base uh, our, our pricing also just on databases, Got the it. number of databases. And the technology you just reviewed, low code, no code, um, implementation well, it, kind of thing, it right? Is, it is by definition no code when it comes to proxy. Yep. When it comes to API integration, um, it could be low code. Um, but yeah, it's all cloud friendly, cloud native. No we disruption could, to operations. Exactly. That's the culprit. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, some, no, this, like, non-disruptive <laughs> operations. No, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, I'll give an example of, a, of uh, migration, right? We can do live migrations. So while the databases are still alive, as you write, oh, your live you, secure migrations. Exactly, you're, you're securing your data benefits. as it migrates. All right, so how much funding have you guys raised so far? We raised 36 and a half, um, series A and B now. Uh, we raised that uh, late last year. Congratulations. Thank you. Who's the, who's the venture funders? Uh, True Ventures is our largest investor, followed by Celesta Capital. Uh, National Grid Partners is an investor, and so is Engineering Capital, and uh, Clear Vision Ventures. And the seed and, and was uh, from Seed engineer was engineering. Engineering and, capital. And then True came in very early on. Okay. Uh, so. Green Spring, Spring is also an investor in us, so is Industry Ventures. Well, privacy has a big concern, big application for you guys, privacy, secure yeah. migrations. 
Very much so. So what we have believe very strongly in is security is personal. Security is yours and my data. Privacy is what the data collector is responsible for. <laughs> So the enterprise better be making sure that they've complied with privacy regulations because they don't tell you how to protect the data. They just fine you. Well, you're not, you're technically a long, six year old start company, six, seven years old, yep. roughly. So yeah, startups can go on long like that. Still a startup, privately held. You're growing, got big records under management there. Congratulations. What's next? I think scaling the business. We're seeing lots of applications for this particular uh, solution, it's going beyond just regulated industries. Like I said, you know, it's a differentiating factor yeah. now. So retail, you know, and a lot of other IOT related industrial customers yeah. are also coming Anish, in. talk about the show here, we're at Reinforce, obviously we're live here on the ground, the show floor, buzzing. What's your takeaway, what's the vibe this year? What, if you had to share, in your opinion, the top story here at the show, what would be the two top things, or three I things? Think I think it's two things. Uh, first of all, um, it feels like we're back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing to see people on the show floor, yeah. people coming in and uh, asking questions and uh, getting to see the product. The second thing that I think is very gratifying is people come in and say, oh, I've heard of you guys. So, thanks to digital media and digital marketing. They weren't baffled, they want baffled. Exactly, they so use baffled. looks like, you know, our outreach has helped. Yeah. and it has kept the con continuity, which is a big deal. Yeah, and now you're a CUBE alumni, welcome to the, to the fold. Appreciate you. you coming on. And uh, we're looking forward to profiling you someday in our startup showcase. And certainly, we'll see you in the Palo Alto studios. Love to have you come in for uh, a deeper dive. Sounds great, looking forward to it. Congratulations on all your success, and so thanks for coming on theCUBE here at Reinforce. Thank you, John. Okay, we're here in, in the, on the ground live, coverage Boston, Massachusetts, for AWS Reinforce 22. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, who's in an analyst session right here. He'll be right back with us on the next interview coming up shortly. Thanks for watching.